Bikes can triple a person's accessible distance from that of walking. And a bike sharing program like City Bike allows four people to a bike versus each person owning a bike. Not only does it save on storage space, but since bikes can be pretty expensive, it's an affordable way for people to access one on occasion. Urban planners call this micromobility. And micromobility is important for a city as dense as NYC, where owning a car is not the normal way of life. In fact, some might argue that a bike is the most efficient way to get around the city. Not all portions of New York are accessible by subway. To reach the in-between areas, you will have to either take a bus, walk, or bike. Buses sometimes don't come by that often, and with walking, people can only walk so far until it becomes uncomfortable. Then there's biking, which cuts your walk time significantly. And what's great about New York City is the access you get to micromobility. So in this video, we are going to cover New York City's bike sharing program, City Bike. We'll talk about the price structure, how to pay for, release, and dock a bike, plus other good information to know. Welcome to Urban Caffeine. Make sure to hit that like button. It helps push this video to other people who might find it useful. The way City Bike works is that bike stations are scattered all throughout the city. A person can take a bike from a station near them and then ride it to another station near their destination. It's as simple as that. And City Bike has two types of bikes. The classic bike is powered by whatever you ate for breakfast. And the electric bike or e-bike still requires some pedaling, but you are assisted by an electric motor, so going up that hill is not going to drain your legs and lungs. When looking at the website and app, the pricing system looks like globity gloop. So we simplified it for you in a table. You can pay for just one ride, unlimited for the day, or unlimited for the year. Disappointingly, there really isn't a weekly or monthly option. When you take a bike out, you are given a time limit. If you go past that time limit, you are charged an extra fee. If you have an unlimited pass, to avoid the extra fee, you can end your ride and start a new one to reset your time limit. And we'll talk about starting and ending rides later in this video. To really see the cost difference between a classic bike and e-bike, let's say you took a 20-minute ride. For both the classic bike and e-bike, whether you use up your 30 minutes or not, you will have to pay the full initial fee. If you had rented out an e-bike, you would be charged an extra 23 cents per minute but only on the time that you had used on that e-bike. And remember that these prices don't include taxes. Paying per single ride is only reasonable when you seldom use a bike. The day pass is worth it when you are going on a bike ride four or more times in a single day. And the annual pass makes sense when you ride a bike 47 or more times in a year. Or when you do the math, that's about 6 rides per non-winter month. Because let's face it, this does not look like fun. Make sure to check the City Bike website to see if there is a discount program that you can qualify for. Even if it's just owning a City Bank card. You can pay via the kiosk at a bike station or one of these mobile apps. There's also the City Bike Key and City Bike Card. The key has been around for years, but today it's not that widely used. As for the card, I think you have to have a membership to get one. Comment below if you're still using a City Bike Key or if you have a City Bike Card. But know that not all methods of payment are created equal. With a kiosk, you can rent up to 4 bikes versus the app that only allows you to rent for yourself. But the limitation with the kiosk is that you can only get a classic bike with a day pass. If you want to get an e-bike, you can only do that via the apps. The Lyft app only lets you buy a single ride or you can link an annual pass that you already purchased. And of course, the City Bike app will let you rent all bikes and buy all passes. Paying with the kiosk is pretty straightforward. Just turn on the screen and follow instructions. Once you've finished your transaction, the kiosk will give you a number. Input this number on this keypad. Wait for the light to turn green and the dock is unlocked. With either the Lyft or City Bike app, 
You can either scan the QR code found at the handlebar of a bike, or you can manually input the ID of the bike, which is located near the bike chain. Doing this will unlock the bike and you can take it for a ride. As you enjoy this ride, I want to say that there are New York topics that I don't often talk about in my videos, like recommended restaurants, recommended museums, or just New York culture in general. My NYC blog is one of several exclusive content made specially for the Urban Caffeine Patreon community. Not only do I write about recommended things to eat and things to see, but also media like shows to watch and materials to read. If you would like to be part of this Patreon community, check out patreon.com slash urbancaffeine. To end your ride, simply find an open dock at any station, ideally one near your destination. Dock your bike, and make sure to wait for the green light and the sound of a click indicating that the bike is locked. To be super sure, you can try and pull the bike out to make sure it's secured. If you want to continue to see other videos like this, make sure you're subscribed. Thank you to all supporters of this channel, especially the Patreon members. You're a big part of the channel's growth and your patronage is greatly appreciated. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and happy New Yorking!